Kefalea. Narrated by Matthew Schmitz. Kefalayan, 26. Mani speaks. The primal man is a great distinguished figure whose treasure has been stolen and who tries to recover it. So he descends from the skies to find his sons, to liberate them and regain his treasure, which is scattered among his enemies. Again, he is someone whose two sons are kidnapped. He comes to liberate them. So the primal man glows in the skies for his sons who are lost to him. They are his soul of life, each one in two powers, making four of them. Again, the ship of the day is a powerful spear. Inside the ship, the great spirit is a wise artisan who adorns and lines up all the weapons for combat. Again, the living spirit is a warrior who comes to a prince made prisoner of war and liberates him from the hands of his enemies. The messenger, too, is someone rare because of the treasure, hand of his prisoners. These light powers, the suns and their soul, and the soul may be shown in the land where it is imprisoned. Again, Mani turns and speaks to his students. You must become purifiers and liberators of your soul that lives everywhere, so you may be courted in the company of the Fathers of Light, of the Kingdom, in the new eternity, and in the place of joy. Kephalaian, 38 The Light Mind and the Solitary Man A student asks the messenger, Mani, about the Light Mind. You said the Light Mind will come and be a saint, and he too is a god, and many gods are with him. And when he enters the body of the flesh, he binds the old man with his five counsels, the five sleepless guardian sons of living spirit, in whose human form the cosmos is made. And he inserts those five intellectual qualities into the five limbs of his body. Where is he now? The old man stands chained in the body, and though he is in bondage, I see how demonic rebellions surge in him. Second, I ask, if he is a great god, unchanging and immeasurable, how could he come and be found in the pettiness of the body? Third, tell me, how is a holy one, the mind, and how is he pure despite the defilement of the body? Fourth, if the light mind exists in saints, why can't we see his likeness as he is? I beg you, can you be persuasive and tell me what I ask you? Fifth, tell me about your mission. Look, it isn't clear to me. In this world, they oppress and persecute you. Mani offers his student a vision. The whole revelation I have unveiled and declared to the church. In your presence, I declare this revelation alone. The student asks, Everything you unveiled, you did so in our presence, yet I want to know about the light mind. What is the light mind? About the light mind. The messenger responds, If I tell you these things you care about, and they become true after your concern, will you understand what you must do? I will give vision to those who see. I will make the living fountain overflow so the thirsty may drink and live. Body of the Light Mind in Humans The messenger speaks to the student. All that error comes from the enemy of the lights, who construed it and made it look like a man. The head of the cosmos has the first garments. His neck is the nape of the garments. His stomach is the five unfolded ones, which are of the same garments. His ribs are the firmaments. His navel is the sphere of the stars 
and the signs of the Zodiac, and also the parts coming from the navel to his hips are the same that come from the sphere to the corners of the four worlds. His loins are the three earths on Atlas's head. His, to the earth on which Atlas stood firm, his shins and his feet are, and the whole zone belongs to. His heart is human. His liver is quadruped animals. His lungs are the race of birds floating in the air. His kidneys are the world of reptiles creeping on the earth. His outer skin is the wall surrounding the piercing and great fire. His are the vessels of the great fire. His darkness. His gall is great intestine and the breath of the great of the worlds. His veins, all the springs and wells. His eyes, his feet are his. This is how each of the worlds stands in harmony. Five gods are fastened in him. They are his soul and his life. The living spirit and the envoy of the five sleepless guardians. Custodian of Splendor The custodian of splendor knows the mind in the world of the mind that is above. He has the whole of the powers of heaven that are in the great king of honor, who is the thought that is in the seventh firmament. He has also humbled Adamus of Light, who is the insight, because of lust. The king of glory, who is the council, has patience over the three images of wind, of fire, and of water. He has him, and over those who do evil. Atlas, who is the consideration of wisdom in the world below. He made him in the foundation below, and the envoy refined from the five intellectuals of life. The summons and the obedience were there. Now they made six sons of the living spirit, who were together with six sons of the first man, and the envoy placed in them the great mind, who is the column of glory, the perfect man. The young Jesus is sent down. And the young Jesus was sent there. He is the image of the living word, of the utterance and obedience. He has made these camps strong, those above and below. Each of them will be safe in the circle of his vigil, and there will be no uprising or betrayal. And look, look, the custodian of splendor is firmly set in the great mind, in the camp above the prison of the bound ones. He turns the gloom of death into nothing. Yet there was a betrayal and an uprising. Sin aborted. It tangled in the soul. It mixed with light that it expelled toward the image of the envoy. It entered the third firmament above the watchtower of the custodian of splendor. From there it tangled with the light. It came loose and fell down to what is dry and moist. It fashioned trees on dry land. But in the sea it gathered form and caused a great uprising in the sea. Thought, the great king of honor. Look, look again. The great king of honor, who is thought in the third firmament. He is made with anger. And there was an uprising. A betrayal and anger happened in his camp. The watchers of heaven who descended to earth in his circle of vigil performed all the acts of treachery. To the people they revealed in the world crafts and heavenly mysteries. An uprising happened, and on the earth came destruction. The abortions plunged down to earth. Adamus of light, the fulfillment. He is set firmly on the earth, and a betrayal came about in his camp. It happened when the abortions plunged down to earth. They formed 
Adam and Eve. They conceived them to rule through them in the world. They fashioned every object of lust on the earth. The entire world was filled with their lust. They persecute churches. They kill the messengers and just Adamus of light's circle of vigil, again and again, and from generation to generation. In the vigil of the King of Glory. Again, in the vigil of the great King of Glory, who is the Grand Council reigning over the three wheels, a disturbance occurred and an affliction. They were oppressed and pained in the three earths. After the envoy displaced his image, the paths were closed and their ascent was blocked by them. The wind, water, and fire ascend to them. Again, in the vigil of Atlas, who humiliates the uprising of the abysses down below. He bent low, and the fastenings underneath were loosened in the foundation below. Because of the quake that happened during the vigil of the Custodian of Splendor, the Column of Glory came out as the helper of the Custodian of Splendor, and he survived under all burdens. Betrayal and Uprising on the King's Watch Conversely, since the betrayal and the uprising that occurred in the watch of the great King of Honor, these watchers came down to earth from the skies. Four angels were called to contend with them. They bound the watchers with an eternal chain and thrust them in a prison of the darkened ones, and they obliterated their children from the earth. Again, the abortions descended in the watch of Adamus, and they conceived Adam and Eve. Because of that great betrayal and the mystery of evil, Jesus was sent the prayer of the five sons. He seized them, those abortions, and he fastened them under the mind of Adam. Because of the earthquake in the three earths, and because the paths were blocked, and springs of wind and water and fire were stopped, Jesus came down to the world. He seized Eve, and he straightened the tracks of the wind, the water, and the fire. He opened the springs for them and established the way of their ascent. Again, since the earth below, Atlas was loosened from the fastenings. Because of this, too, Jesus went down, seizing Eve until he reached that place. Then, he came to rest. The light mind humbles the body. Look at all these vigils of the zones where great gods are masters watching over them. Uprisings have happened and treachery. From time to time there is a great humiliation until they humble the powers of enmity. So also is this body. Though small, here a great power lives. The old man also inhabits it. He is cruel and moves with great cunning until the light mind finds how to humble and control this body as it sees proper. So they are the masters in the watched districts of his outer brothers. There, in the great body, the earthquakes and betrayal happened again and again. There is the mind's watched district, which is the body of the flesh. But sin looms incessantly, agitating in the body. Powers of light are good. Now you understand that the powers of light are good, and the beginning and the end are unveiled to them. Whatever they do is with good judgment. For this reason, they allow the enmity of initial error and follow its pleasure for a moment. Then they seize. They have acted first with a well-tempered judgment. How may the light mind come? As for the other question you ask me, how may the light mind come, this great and honored Holy One, and assume this little body of flesh? Again, look, look, these gods are great and mighty. Each is enclosed and hard-pressed in the place where he is set like trees holding to their taproot. 
so this is also how each one holds his taproot. So this is how each one has held on to his taproot in the world and where he is set. Now, as you already know, the world is set firm, ordered by the five sons of the living spirit in all its members. Sin took this body from the land, constructed it in its members. It took its body from the five bodies of darkness. Sin constructed the body, yet its soul it took from the five shining gods. Sin bound the soul in the five members of the body. It bound mind in bone, thought in sinew, insight in vain, the counsel in flesh, and consideration in skin. Sin finds the soul. Sin set its five powers, its mind, on the mind of the soul, its insight on insight of the soul, its counsel on counsel of the soul, its consideration on consideration of the soul. It placed its five angels and authorities on the five members of the soul, which it brought in and bound in flesh. Others spoke to the soul and led it on, to all that is evil, to all the sins of lust, to the worship of idols, to wrong opinions, to humiliation in the humiliation of slavery, as it is set fast, worshiping things impermanent, bowing before idols of wood and gold and silver, worshiping beasts unclean and polluted. Think of them, how ugly in form and appearance the soul assumed error and forgetting. It forgot its essence and its race and its kin. It didn't know the door of the place to pray to him. It grew hostile to the Father. It was wicked in its own light. The light mind finds the soul and releases the new man. The light mind comes and finds the soul and assumes it into wisdom. He will become for it the bonds and members of the body. He will loosen the mind of the soul and release it from the bone. He will release the thought of the soul from sinew and bind the thought of sinew in sinew. He will release insight of the soul from the vein and bind insight of sin in the vein. He will loosen the counsel of the soul and release it from the flesh, and so bind the counsel of sin in the flesh. He will release consideration in the soul from skin and bind consideration of sin in the skin. How He Will Release the Members of the Soul This is how He will release the members of the soul and free them from the five members of sin. Conversely, these five members of sin that were loose, He will bind. He will make right the members of the soul and form and purify them, and construct a new man from them, a child of justice. And when he fashions and constructs and purifies the new man, he will bring forth five great living members from the five great members and place them in the members of the new man. He will place his mind, which is in love, in the mind of the new man. And thought, which is faith, he will place in the thought of the new man, whom he will purify. His insight, which is perfection, he will place in the insight of the new man. His counsel, which is patience, he will place in his counsel and wisdom, which is his consideration, he will place in the new man. He will make an image of the pure word from the word of sin and add it to his word, so he becomes the nourisher and the strengthener. When he is perfect. When he is perfect, the twelve members and his wisdom, he becomes just as he perfects. Formerly he was running aimlessly, but now he runs up his road and his path and mount to the heights, to the great aeons. So the old man is bound in lust, foolishness in these five members of the body. The dark spirit is imprisoned with them in a bond and in severe misery. 
the new man reigns by love. And the new man reigns by love, by faith, by perfection, by patience, and by wisdom. Yet his king is the light mind, who is king of all. He reigns over it as he wishes. The member's sin is imprisoned, yet the light mind is king. And an affection often rises in the body. Foolish Sin Climbs Up there are instances when sin will climb up and show off its foolishness. It disturbs consideration and clouds wisdom and understanding. It splits truth and puts doubt in him, uttering foolish words. When this kind of foolishness enters the church, the teachers and elders gather. They inform wisdom and consideration. Wisdom is set in place and well. Sin will rise and light mind will contend. If the new man will not accept blame and edification from his brothers and helpers, then sin will rise again, moving from consideration to the council. Sin will take patience from him and feed him cowardice and pain. And sin shows off among the brothers. It does what it wants, ignoring advice, and becomes its foolishness. But a battle and a war materialize between light mind and sin in the council. They assemble and silence him and take him away to another time. These are his companions in his struggle. Now a solitary man. If in that place, then sin will rise again and clothe him with lust and vanity and pride. He breaks off from his teacher and the brothers. He always wants to go in and come out alone, a solitary man. He will always walk alone. It is a sign that the closeness of his brothers does not persuade him. If he again does not keep his heart from lust, again sin will rise in him. The thought of death will enter his thought. He will yield to vanity, causing his faith and truth to leave him. When the sign of his foolishness is displayed and his reputation spreads in the church, the wise in the church will come to him to straighten out his heart and encourage it with God's edification. If he took his brother's advice and listened and freed himself from anger, he might live and conquer sin and all its wars. An Earthly Man but if he fails to make this watch secure, sin will rise and assume his mind, and disturb his mind, which earlier was calm. It will disrupt his love and take it away from his teacher and instructor. It will take love from his heart and his church, and fill it with hatred. Then all his brothers become hateful before him. His brothers and loved ones and friends who love him will be like enemies before him. He is disturbed and lets his love and his will turn from him. He will be a vessel of loss. He will leave the church and drop down to the world. Mind who was in him will scatter away and go to the envoy who sent him. He will be filled with evil spirits and they will drag him about. He will be like worldly men. He will change and become like a bird with its feathers plucked out. He becomes an earthly man. Instruction on the ways of the light mind. I, Mani, have taught you and opened your eyes about confusion in the zone. How can it rise in the camps of the mighty gods? Such disturbances happen in the light mind and in the keepers of the watch, for they are set firmly in the zone, though not visible. This too is the way of the light mind, for he is not visible in the body. And these keepers of the watch are great, yet they are twisted. They have become small with their appropriate tasks. The process is like mind, who was great and exalted, and now he is bent over and becomes small in this small, worthless body. While the gods in the outer zone are transcendent and pure, they are involved in the mingling into the entirety but are not defiled. 
This too is like the light mind. Consider the might and actions of the light mind, how vast he is over the keepers of the watch of the body. He stays in his camp. He closes down the body's deliberations from the temptations of sin. He limits them and scatters them. He puts them down at his will. He does another work surpassing the others. He bestows a great spirit over the elect. Now you may find him standing on the earth, rising up in his heart and ascending to the Father, the God of truth. He who exists and is established above all things without loss. And again, he may push down in his insight and consideration and descend to the land where darkness poured out. His heart will run and touch everything. Then Mani says to the student, I have taught you in the deeds of the light mind. Whoever has an open and perceptive eye, the light mind can appear to him. Whoever lacks that eye, the light mind cannot appear to him. As for my work, not manifest or revealed to you, I will teach you and open your eyes to this wonder and my leadership. Mani records his triumphs. Observe, I, a single Manichaean, have come alone to the world, and the races and kin of the body, and the gold, silver, copper, and breastplates, the multitude's armor, and a mass of people submit to me, including many kinds of gods and idols from the smelting furnaces. You have seen the kingdom of the world, yet with all their advantages and gifts, with breastplates and a violent war, they have subdued no city or conquered no country. But without breastplate or armor, I have conquered remote cities by the word of God and remote countries, and they bless my name, which is glorified in all countries. And there is another thing I shall teach you. Kings have worked with me, and the nobles and their officials and their powers, so they might bring their truth to nothing. They lacked the strength to work against me. Since I am now alone, why were they impotent before me and all those who opposed me? And I have a third message. No one in this world has freed his children and brothers and kin from the circumstance of all things as I have. I have freed all my children from labor. And I have a fourth thing. I have covered them with the breastplate of wisdom, and so among humans you will not find one who has been victorious. No one is victorious over me in the whole world, nor upon my children. No one can conquer them. And as a fifth feat, with my power I have chosen the entire election. I have given my children my emblems of authority and great springs of wisdom, so that as the messenger of the church I have made it mine. I have strengthened the church and embellished it with all beneficial qualities. I have planted the good and sown truth in every far and near land. Messengers and envoys I have sent to all countries. So messengers before me have not done what I have in this harsh generation, except for only Jesus, the Son of Greatness, who is the Father of all messengers. No envoy has been like me. Look and see me now, how great is my power in my actions. No earlier envoy in the flesh has reached my likeness. The great doors have been opened by me to the gods and angels and people, and all spirits and living souls who are prepared for life and for eternal rest. After his students heard what Mani proclaimed, they answered him, saying, All you have uttered to us is great and mighty which you accomplished with your powers and the power of the one who sent you. Who could fully thank you for the grace you have given us except the one who sent you? We have but one gift for repaying you. We will become strong in your faith, persevere in your commandments, and, of the word you proclaimed to us, be persuaded.